been frozen out. Facing an extinction level event. We don't fight this fight right now. You're not going to have black on you. All right, folks, so um, I got tired of sitting down. So I said, you know what, I'm going to sit here and stand up for this one. So, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let me unpack this, okay? Let me unpack this if you kill. Um, uh, we're, we're talking about money. We're talking about money. And the segment's called Where's Our Money? And so you, you heard Reverend Barber and I talking about this, where I was talking about this, this whole idea of what is it that we can fund ourselves? Now... Earlier, my, my boy Dave came in and gave me a haircut. And Dave popped by. I paid Dave uh, his 30 bucks. So we're very good at funding hairstyles. We're very good at uh, funding when we go into the, to the beauty salon. We're very good at all those different things. But when we start talking about how do we make demands when we're already spending dollars. It's amazing how black folk get real uncomfortable. Like, red, black people get real uncomfortable. I, I can't tell y'all how many times I've had black people say, oh, you know, I'll, you know, you know Ro, Roland real militant. You know, he, he, he real aggressive with that thing. You know, uh, sometimes you just, you, you, you gotta make white folk feel comfortable. And so when, when Byron Allen took out this ad uh, in the Detroit Free Press is also going to run in the Wall Street Journal. And when we um, had the meeting with General Motors, and, and let me be real clear, this ain't a General Motors thing. We, we meeting with everybody. See, in media alone, we're not getting our money. We're not getting the money that we deserve as black-owned media from pharmaceuticals. We're not getting from the automotive sector. We're not, getting, we're not getting it from all of the sectors. See, when, when y'all heard me say, when y'all heard me say, y'all heard me say to Reverend Barber, I want to know black construction companies, black catering companies, black transportation companies, all of that. See, I, I'm no disrespect, and, and look, I am fully supportive of black people on corporate boards. But if your ass black and you are on a corporate board of directors and you are not asking and demanding the very same thing I'm talking about, it's a waste of time for us celebrating you on the board of directors. If you are a black CEO I need to know how you change the game. Not you getting money. Not you creating wealth just for your family. I need to know how is it that you as a black CEO, as a black COO, as a black CTO, as a black CIO, as a black senior vice president, as a black board member, how are you changing the game? Not just for you. How are we challenging America where the money is being spent right now? Had a brother say, man, you always dog a reparation movement. No, I'm not. What I'm saying to you is that there is money literally being spent right now that we are not saying where's our fair share. White House announced $500 million going to states for COVID vaccine awareness. You should be asking in North Carolina, South Carolina, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Missouri, Illinois. I can go on and on and on. How is that money going to be spent 
Will it be spent with black vendors? Will it be spent? Y'all did not hear me say black organizations. What we have done in black America is we have allowed this entire infrastructure to seed black organizations and they have gotten a pittance of what we should be getting. Y'all heard Reverend Barbara say, we let folk come in and buy tables at our event. How much is the table? How much is the table? $1,000? $5,000? That's it? Do you understand? If a corporation is in a position to give, in a position to give contracts that are worth 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200, 500 million dollars, the same black organizations can buy their own damn table. Y'all see what I'm talking about here? All of these companies, all of these companies are sitting here. Oh, we're going to give, uh, we're going to give this money, uh, and we're going to give this money to this black group. But are you going to fund any black companies? General Motors announced a $10 million initiative support social justice. Listen to me, y'all. 10 million. And they said, they said, we're going to give, we're going to give a million to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. A million. <laughs> but if they were funding black media institutions, properly, hell, we can give the million. Let, 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 me, let me sort of unpack this for y'all. Let, let me unpack this for y'all. See, I had to stand up on this one. I, could, I couldn't sit down on this one. And panel, I'm coming to y'all because, uh, because you got Mustafa who's dealing with environmental justice. You got to run with context media. You got K Kelly, uh, Stradges. When you start funding properly black companies, then we're not sitting here, y'all, tripping on some BS donation. We can't continue... Folk, oh, we, we, we've set goals of 5% of, we've set a goal of 8%. We, that's it? That, that's it. General Motors, black people, 11.4% market share. Dollars you spend on advertising with black-owned media should match your market share. Go down the line to every corporation in this country. A at some point, y'all, we got to recognize game, recognizing game. Don't you understand what it would be like if black folks, we could say, no, no. <laughs> we can fund our own groups. We can fund our own groups. We good. We can fund our own groups. I, I, I love golf. I love golf. I love golf. I love golf. Imagine if the proper dollars are coming to Roller Martin Unfiltered, New Vision Media. Then I decide to say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to buy uh, outfitted customized van for 
for 10 HBCU golf teams. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just put. No, no, no. We don't have to. Um, 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 General Motors, um, Ford, uh, Chrysler, Toyota, Mercedes. Could, 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 could y'all please, could, could, could y'all please, please donate? Could, could y'all please donate uh, a, 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 a vehicle? Uh, can y'all do, donate a vehicle to, 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 to this one HBCU? And, and we'll take a picture and we'll put it out there and we'll show everybody and we'll praise y'all. We'll give y'all all the credit in the world because y'all gave us one van. No. If y'all spending three billion dollars annually on advertising, and if you give black on if black on media deservedly gets two to three hundred million of that money every single year, we can buy the damn van ourselves. Folks, what we are doing is we are literally giving away our hard earned capital and loyalty to brands for nothing. And what I'm saying is when you hear me talk about this third reconstruction, this notion of economic social justice, is we send forth the word to every corporation in every single sector, we are coming. And we are coming to get what is ours. And we are going to use our voices, whether there's a legal strategy to sue you and your ad agencies, whether we're gonna call you out by name in newspapers and magazines and on websites, on digital shows, on radio, in every single form. Because we simply cannot wait. Y'all look, I'm 52. I'll be 53 in November. No day is promised for any of us and you can't take it with you. So the question is what you gonna do with it while you got it. And so imagine, just I want you just imagine. Uh, uh, imagine if all of a sudden, let's just say $5 billion in media spending goes to black owned media because of what we're doing. Let's just say five, five billion. L let's say this show then got 5% of the five billion annually. I'm just doing some basic math. Y'all, that's 50 million every year. That's just 5%. Five billion, ten percent of five billion is five hundred million. Ten percent of five hundred million is fifty million. Uh, imagine then. I'm just I'm just throwing this out. Imagine then, if we said we're gonna take five million of the fifty million we get every year, and every year we are going to seed and fund a school of communications that already exists, but to bolster the program, to create the next generation of Roland Martins and folk who work for me and producers and writers and directors and camera operators. Do y'all see how this changes the game? I need us to understand that black people, and Torun, I'm gonna come to you first, black people we have been playing ourselves small. We have been going to people hat in hand, asking them for pennies on the dollar, 
when we have been providing far more value to them. And imagine if we'd say this, not just to corporate America, but to the federal government, to the state governments, to the county governments, to the city governments, to the school boards, that no longer are we going to accept the pennies that you have been offering. We are here to do as Dr. King said. We are here to cash a check that was sent back to us, stamp insufficient funds, no. Now we are saying is, we see the money sitting right there in the vault. You ain't sending us a check. You can cash app it, PayPal it, Venmo it, Zelle, however you want to send it to us, but we are not going to play ourselves small. Folk, that's where we are right now. And if we learn the lesson of operating collectively and stop being in silos and stop taking pennies, we could have a media company that's the size of CNN and Fox News and Univision. We can have a construction company that's the size of the major construction companies, Turner. We could have PR companies that are as big as uh, uh, Sunshine and Sachs uh, and Lippin Group and all those different groups. I am sick and tired of saying that there are two points pre-COVID, there are 2.6 million black owned businesses and 2.5 million only have one employee doing average revenue of $54,000. The time for us to stop playing small ball is over. It's time for us to play grown folk major league ball. And it ain't gonna happen if we have a bunch of scared Negroes who are, who are so scared I don't want to ask for a lot. No. It's time for us to stop playing ourselves small. To run, I'll start with you. And to um, address an, an elephant in the room that people aren't really talking about. Um, we, as black people, as black entrepreneurs, and as black uh, media people, we get caught up in this idea of individualism over collectivism. Um, Ever since 1964, one of the cons of that civil rights bill was that it kind of took away some of the energy that black people had when they traded with each other, when they didn't have a choice. It also took away some of the idea of community that we had, you know, and uh, from Jim Crow up until the 1960s, we had black owned newspapers, we had black owned record labels, we had black owned radio. And there was an infrastructure where people who had a talent could take their writing gifts or their speaking gifts or their um, musical gifts and they could create an infrastructure that would feed them and feed their communities and feed their families all the way down to um, grocery stores and land. What we have now is people who are so obsessed with going into white corporate America, going into larger corporate America, making a name for themselves and not caring about bringing anything back for their community. That's a very much a fracture that has to be repaired and that has to start psychologically first before it starts anywhere else. We have to get out of this idea that we're all in these individual little cults and I got mine and everybody else has to get it the way they, they get it and, every, and, and start thinking collectively. That's gonna have to be the first thing. Um, the second thing is something that you alluded to and that Reverend um, Barbara alluded to is that we have to start making distinctions between executives, um, ex between black executives and executives who are black. Because you can be a black executive and not really be concerned about the well-being of your people outside of your own paycheck. Someone who's a black executive, someone who's an executive who is black, is thinking about what can he do to benefit his collective? What can he impart on people who may not be where he, he or she is? What wisdom can you take from corporate America, bring back to your community, build a new generation of people to follow you, to take out of corporate America and build our own infrastructure and build our own businesses? I think that's what's going to have to happen. And I think until we realize that we're going to have to think collectively instead of individually, we're going to keep going in the circle where we keep going back and begging for corporate corporations to pass money to donate, give donations to organizations that may or may not trickle down to the people who really need them, you know, to put up vanity projects to make it look like they're really concerned about black lives when none of that information and none of that knowledge or none of that pipeline goes to feed people who may be talented but may not have the resources. Ke that has to start with us. Kelly, we can either receive checks or we can write checks. No, I... I definitely agree with what's been said so far. One thing that I do want to point out, um, at the beginning of what you were talking about, you were saying 
about these black C-suite leaders uh, who are in a position to actually do something uh, regarding bringing more money to the communities, regarding, you know, uplifting us as people. And like Terrain said, it's a matter of whether you are a black executive or executive who is black, but something else um, that needs to be taken into consideration is the lack of trust between those who are in these possessions and the community at large. Meaning when something goes down, when, when, when shit hits the fan, so to speak, do these C-suite leaders trust us, the, the general public, the consumer, to have their back? Meaning if they, if they resign or if they quit or if they get fired, do they trust us enough to boycott? Do they trust us enough to support them in their plight to help us? I feel like as as we have come into this individ individualistic society of, you know, me, 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 um, have to put myself out there first because no one else has my back, we have this lack of trust within our community such that we don't pour into each other the way that, you know, my parents did, my grandparents did. We don't trust our own businesses to help each other. So that's definitely something that we need to take into consideration when we have these conversations. The cost-benefit analysis of self-preservation, especially right. when you're in a C-suite, definitely needs to be taken into consideration. Consideration, because right now these sweet, these C-suite leaders are saying, "Hey, it makes more sense for me not to say anything because I don't know if my community is going to have my back." Got it. Um, my second, I'm I'm sorry. I said I said got it. Yeah. No. Um. And my second point was about whether we even trust ourselves with our craft and with our worth. You know, we did. I remember last year we did like the blackout on Instagram, and everybody had a black tile. But it needs to be more than that. Going back to my point about boycotting and supporting and making sure that the change that we seek is something that we are creating. It, it's more than just a social media post. It's more than just marching out on the street. You have to talk with your dollars. You have to talk yeah, with your... It's, but that's what I'm saying. And mobilizing, you organizing. each other in order to do that. Mobilizing, organizing. You mobilize Absolutely. and organize your dollars. Uh, Mustafa. Well, C Street leaders, uh, you know, they have a responsibility for making sure that they stay connected to what's going on, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the streets um, and with other individuals. And just let me say this, because, you know, I've been having this conversation with folks for a while now, Roland. I'm glad you're bringing this up, because we're at a transformational moment. You know, let's look at it on the federal government side. You got $2 trillion that the current administration says is going to flow out. You got 2 to $4 trillion around infrastructure. We should be making sure that our folks are positioned to be able to make sure that they're taking advantage of that. And there has to be accountability in the process from our current administration to make sure that for once we're actually building wealth inside of the various businesses um, that, that should have a level playing field. And, and we know that that's not the case because when we look at federal contracting, and I know a lot about that, there's a small percentage that makes it to African-American communities, to Latinx communities and indigenous communities. And then if we flip it and look on the corporate side, so we had a conversation around Amazon. So we know that this past year they made $386, $387 billion. Bezos, he's worth $180 billion. You got folks like Tesla, and you got um, the leadership there, $155 billion. You got Bill Gates, another $155, $156 billion. With all that being said, there are opportunities if, one, we put the right pressures and build the accountability in, both on the federal side and on the corporate side, that you can actually build real wealth inside of our community. But we have to ask the question, one, do others want us to build wealth? And then, two, are we comfortable enough with our own selves to be ready to do what's necessary to make that become a reality? I hope the answer is yes. And if the answer is yes, if we know all these dollars are flowing, then those big organizations should be helping to make sure that folks have the capacity and that the training is there and the mentoring is there for all the various businesses that are out there. Roland, I know you do work in that space, but we don't have enough folks who are saying, I see what this horizon looks like, and I'm willing to invest some of my time to make sure that right. other brothers and sisters are able to benefit. It's all about capacity. That's what it boils down to. Folks, we're going to continue uh, driving this point home, getting our people to understand you got to understand economic social justice. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart.
When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.